Greetings, everyone. This is uh, Professor Jeffrey Burleson, uh, Director of Piano Studies at Hunter College, actually reporting to you from Hunter College, from Lang Recital Hall. And just to prove that I'm here, Zoom backdrops won't really do this. So yes, I'm in the audience of uh, Lang Recital Hall, uh, pleased to death to be hosting a piano masterclass with the brilliant Soyeon Kate Lee. This is the first piano master class. This is the first, I think, event that we've had in Lang Recital Hall since March 2020. So uh, we are all elated to be doing this. Obviously, we are all masked uh, here and distanced. There are only a few of us in the audience, uh, performers, uh, myself, and technical support. Uh, but we are making it happen. Um, Professor Soyeon Kate Lee is reporting from uh, Cincinnati. Uh, she teaches at the College Conservatory of Cincinnati. So let me tell you about uh, the brilliant Soyeon Kate Lee. She was the 2010 Naumburg International Piano Competition winner, 2004 Concert Artist Guild International Competition winner. She's performed concerti with very eminent orchestras like the Cleveland Orchestra, the London Symphony Orchestra, um, pretty well-known organizations, I think. Uh, she's also recorded extensively for Naxos. Uh, her discography includes two volumes of Scriabin sonatas, uh, list opera transcriptions, and two volumes of um, uh, Scriabin works as well. And speaking of Scriabin, I first had the great pleasure of getting to know Soyeon when I was her DMA dissertation advisor at uh, the CUNY Graduate Center. Uh, she really wrote a brilliant, incisive work on performance analysis of Scriabin's uh, early piano music. So it was uh, such a great pleasure to work with her on that. Uh, Sion Kate Lee is Associate Professor of Music in Piano at the Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music, and she just won a very prestigious teaching award there, uh, the A.B. Dolly Cohen Award for Excellence in Teaching. So without further ado, um, it's my great pleasure to introduce you all to Sion Kate Lee. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here and to hear live music. <laughs> um, and I, you took the words right out of my mouth, but I, I also wanted to mention what a pleasure it is to see you again after many years. And I know you all are, know this already. Um, Professor Burleson is fantastic in every way possible musically and as a person and so it's a special place in my heart to you know come back and share this time with you so thanks for having me thank you so much uh, professor lee thank you for those those very generous comments it's it's all extremely mutual and this is just it's so great that we're moving towards a little something approaching normalcy you know a, a little bit more every day so, uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce our first performer. We have three performers today. I'll, I will just introduce everyone um, a, as they come. Uh, our first performer is Shinwi Wu, uh, and she will be performing Saint-Saëns' Prelude from the album Opus 72. Uh, so, uh, Shinwi, toy, 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 and take it away.
Wonderful. Can you hear me? <laughs> Shinri, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, it was wonderful, beautiful playing. Um, I guess your teacher introduced you to this piece? <laughs> um, well, you know, I, I have to confess that um, when I received the repertoire, I was delighted, of course, to get to know these pieces um, better. Um, and a little nervous at the same time because Professor Burleson, of course, is sort of the expert in Sun Sons. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I was looking at them yesterday and, you know, of course, it's more prevalent in the Thais um, paraphrase that we'll hear later. Um, but he's really like the French list. It seems like that to me. Um, and he, this prelude is so compact, but what's striking to me when I was looking at it is right away, there is this gush of emotion that it, you know, it's not such a long buildup, of course, because it's such a short piece. And the kernel are these fourths, right? Which basically takes over in, in this development, right? And I was wondering two things. If you could um, make that maybe just a little bit more clear to us mm -hmm. so that when we get that, in its exuberant appassionado that we'll be able to connect it. I think most of us do anyways, but it would be lovely to um, have that be a little bit more convincing. And I, and of course this is a personal um, thing and you can take it if you want to, but with a piece, especially with Tempo Rubato and passages that repeat quite a bit, I think it's very easy for all of us to fall in the trap of making similar gestures with rubato. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that you did some of that here, you know. So there was always this beautifully done, but always a sense of a little bit of push forward and then backward in very similar manner. And I'm wondering if you could just do what is actually in the score in this case. And instead of breaking up the first two measures into two sort of small waves forward, if we could have something that goes over the entire two measures. Do you think you could try that? And I, I, I don't want to micromanage and tell you what to do, but I think um, if, if you can just refrain from making the same gesture forward in those two measures. I think that would already take care of it. You want to try? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Good, good, good. That was better. I wondered... I don't know, it might be me, but I just find this so beautiful because he, he, I'm gonna hear it there. And now that I can relate it, I would love, we have a lot of ease here anyways. Just pay a little bit more closer attention to this, perhaps, yeah? And how do you, this, um, this bar, how do you hear it? Do you hear it as some kind of interruption? Um, do you hear it as you know, something that you want to pedal completely differently? Do you think it leads there? What is your intent? Um, I think this bar is like on the end of the phrase, but also like it, um, it will lead like towards to the next phrase. Okay, so can I ask you about your pedaling here? <laughs> Can you just play that bar the way you, yeah, sure. you, you, you envision? Sorry. Okay, okay, I see. Can, um, you know, what if you didn't think that it was and, and sort of a, almost an echo? Because I understand that you're, you're doing this diminuendo, which is great, but I think it has the tendency 
to drop. And what if you try? What if you made the diminuendo just a little later? Because I think it will elongate our phrase. If your goal is to play this as a three bar phrase, which I think is what you said, right? Um, because what I think could be a trap in something um, writing like this is having and then and then and I would love to hear three bars complete. Okay, okay? if you want to try and then keep going. Yeah. I know this is really hard to actually I I that really worked for me I don't know I, I I it just felt more organic and that you weren't being driven by this tempo rubato necessarily it just sort of unfolded beautifully um, you know this is trickier than I, the, the, so getting into this don't try to rush into it it's actually technically more difficult. Of course, Sansan's is technically difficult. Um, but I think you can take time to place it. You will feel better just in terms of your ability to, you know, play cleanly. But I think the music can use it, you know? Okay, so don't feel like you have to rush. Can you just go from this one, the last one, and after that? that arrival before you you take us farther okay okay Shin, I have a question um you know after the initial and you go to the are you taking that time that's without any pedal for dramatic effect? Uh, yeah. I really like it actually, and I wish you would believe in it a little more because it feels almost like an accident, <laughs> you know? So just go with it. I think your intuition is right on. So after. I mean, really, even physically, you can give us this intensity of silence, yeah. you know, even more. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> But you know, you pedal differently, this, this harmony, you use a lot less pedal. Do you do that on purpose? Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, I like so much the drama that you create with this rest, but if the notes that follow it also are pretty dry, then I think it takes away from the rest that you just gave us. So here, can you employ the same pedal yeah. when you go to the next harmony? Okay, try it. That's better. That's better. Okay. Um, Keep thinking about this rest. I, I like the drama of it. It feels a little bit unnatural right now, but I think you're really on the right track with it. So, um, but the pedaling after that, I think really worked, okay? Now, this appassionata arrives almost too soon. 
you know and but i think if we look forward to where it's really going it will you know allow us to be a little more at ease about this fortissimo arrival so where is it really going if if you had to make a graph of this <laughs> this piece the emotional crux of it and the dynamic crux too where is it for you um um so you mean like uh, this phrase leads to where leads i i i'm just wondering where is the i guess i mean dynamic peak he writes as that b flat major chord right which um to me is wonderful but it feels like the i don't know the appassionato the emotional climax happens before that and then maybe it's the harmonic climax that happens with this because it feels so foreign almost you know but all this to say that when you arrive right where you're when you arrive how are you going to create this appassionato i don't think that you have to stress out to play fortissimo necessarily i think it, you know considering where we came from it's going to sound open anyways and i think the sense of the appassionato actually comes from uh your timing so maybe if you can be a little bit more free that will give it the appassionato and 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 save your dynamic you know um crescendo maybe for a little bit later yeah yeah okay you want to try just getting into it maybe from from here yeah the C sharp even more and by that I mean feel the follow through in your arm don't be in a hurry to to go on feel like you have time to invest in all of this so instead of holding your arm back just you know it's like in yoga breathing out <laughs> I think you can do a little bit of that with your arm okay yeah. right on it so much better your sound is much better already okay now the space between this bass note and right the the first note of the right hand the mel melody I think is uh, I, I I like that you're, you're taking time but maybe not in the same way in measures two and four so in some way <laughs> Measures two and four is more of a continuation. Yeah. Those are con uh, continuing um, m measures. Okay? Mm -hmm. Can you try? And you can take more time on one and three. Yeah? Try. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't really hear myself with the headphones on. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's that's much better do me a favor when you come your left hand so measures two and four of this um this phrase two and four your left hand the bass is a little bit late okay maybe can you think of i mean i don't want to say late i think you're placing it too much you're on time but maybe don't place it as much in measures two and four okay yeah. um and then keep going
those four measures were wonderful. Actually, yeah. And the beginning of the stringendo was also very effective. Um, when it goes into the B flat major, it foreshadows what's coming later. I think you can take more time. It's really kind of tricky. All of these. Now, when you. I mean, the left hand is changing directions, right? We're going from this. This kind of pattern to da da da, bum bum bum, just a descending line. So I think you can allow yourself to actually let us register that too. So the and then you can, you know, really arrive at this. And and I think that's important, of course. But could I have, you know, a little bit more left hand in your thumb? That should probably be the prominent. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, can you try? Take more time in the retard measure. Go from the strangendo, maybe. Do you feel more comfortable? Yeah. Yeah, and, and I, it doesn't sound like you're taking that much time. It actually really prepares us well for the at tempo, okay? Um, all right, let's go right on mo Molto Allegro. track with this meaning I think it's a lot <laughs> I don't know what he had in mind but I want you to imagine this kind of this it's actually it's brilliant writing of course but I want you to think of most of this as maybe mezzo piano at most and I want you to think about outlining the harmony of the left hand basically right and maybe you could ground us more with your left hand I, I want to hear that rhythm and that melody in the left hand harmonic melody okay and then especially maybe you can take a little more time to hear these two I think you could place a little bit more. Okay? Yeah. Can you try? Xinying? <laughs> One thing. Um, you know, when you get to the C major, I want to, uh, let's just uh, exaggerate. And I want you to give me a nice accent on the C major chord because I want you to really feel this. And whenever you reach the C major, I want you to feel the openness of it. Okay? Can you try? And, and I mean that both dynamically too and in terms of time. Okay? Try. Okay, what did you think about the C majors? Um, um, 
Yeah, uh, now I just feel like um, the phrases have like different um, like color. Once I like, it adds yeah. up beautifully. I think I think and, and you did it very well. So keep working in that direction. Okay, and I think it sets you up better for this. <laughs> I keep wanting to go <laughs> in the wrong key. <laughs> Whenever I hear that. Okay, um, I think you could actually, let me see. Um, do you mind? I know it's really uncomfortable to play with a headset, but just so you don't have to keep doing this, can you just start from that low figure and just go up to the B flat and stop there, the B flat major chord? Okay, Shinyue, I want you to play just the left hand for me. Oh, sure. So you're being really true to the score and you can throw out what I'm saying um, <laughs> if you'd like, but for now, just for now, I wonder if uh, what you're doing is you're marking every single one of them. And I know that there is a slur, but for the sake of this gesture, you know, we haven't had this kind of, everything's been going down you know there, there's a constant motion of pulling that now we have from the depths of the keyboard I don't want you to mark the measures sure. you just see if you can um, go through the bar lines okay all right try Now add the, add the right hand. And feel free to take time if you want. I like it. Do you? I, I, I think it works. I think you could even take more. You know, this is one of these instances. I wouldn't do this if it was Ravel, but... I would actually keep the pedal or maybe use half pedal because I think you're changing there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Somehow it, it's like the bottom drops out. We need all the resonances to help us. Um, if reach on and actually, you know what? Just for me, can you try? changing only half when you get up here and then keep the same pedal i think this should be a wash of sound try it okay can you go from from the yeah. something like that i think so keep going yeah. uh, forte right and then not really any diminuendo anywhere right he writes poco a poco diminuendo a little bit later in the second group of yeah and it's quite a long way down to and so i think we have to be mindful of that both that there is no piano or mezzo forte or any sort of drop written here and, and and so maybe we can really take that, you know, as is. You have as if the, the intensity of this is still there. Don't don't give up. And even this, there's something really. There's an accent on it too. Only a little bit different. 
different, right? No accent. And then we disappear. Yeah, okay, so can you gauge that diminuendo a little bit better? I think you can use the, the you know, the momentum from all of it there to continue a little bit. Okay? Can you can you try from there or maybe from here? this staccatos <laughs> written over the half notes and I wonder if the gesture of it could change from these chords down so in the way you approach these maybe you can just kind of like they're a little bit more suspended you know yeah just that last page maybe from here go back to the beginning when you started uh so um what i think about this um part is like because we just like gone through this so yeah like, uh, there's an urge to go back to the theme so like um i feel more happy like more like it's like home again okay it's definitely like and that's the best thing about i think musical structure is that we always hopefully <laughs> come home um but if you just look at you you started piano i mean if we just take what he writes right we have dolcissimo espressivo and calmato with the same material so there is a sense of you're right you are home but you're not home in the same sense you were home before you know you're a little older <laughs> of course you're a few minutes older at least and so i think that there is a the emotional state has to change something sweeter something you know that you've experienced all of this drama and 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 something calmer i mean you can be happy and calm at the same time you know so maybe can you find a different quality of sound when you return okay just the last few measures getting back into tempo time okay. bum 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 okay we're not moving up in register like the first time right there's something much more insistent about staying in the same place okay so enjoy that just write on it okay each time i want you to think of the third time as being the strongest Although I would love equal, but third time, you cannot back away. Okay? One, one more time. Same thing. Good, good. Look, 
I don't know if this is how you feel, but to me, it seems like when you play this, <laughs> you're counting and you're w w waiting to get on to the next measure. I, I wonder if you could get your... <laughs> Who cares if it's a little late? It's to new tone, anyway. Listen to what's happening to the sound. Be with it. And then... And then... <gasps> It's like somebody opening their eyes, you know, like one last time, except it happens more than once in this one. Okay, so don't be driven by this pulse. I think we're, you know, it's coming to a close anyway. Yeah, right on it, this. It's okay. softer good good genuine. that was better that was better I, I feel like you captured the strangeness of this but this last one the una corda right I want you to think pianissimo and una corda almost like I can't hear it's so veiled and then out of that Flower, something you know from from nowhere. Try try just the last last the second G major chord. That's it. Thanks for playing. Thank you. All right. Bravo, Shinui, and um, Professor Lee. So many uh, amazing, uh, detailed, insightful comments. Thank you so much. That was just really, really, really wonderful to hear, hear all those compelling perspectives. Um, yeah. All right. So um, this is a, an, an all French uh, master class. <laughs> <laughs> we will with uh, it's sort of a uh, a sandwich where Saint Sans is the bread and Ravel is the meat, uh, and so we're to the meat portion now. Um, so our next performer is Sheng Liang, um, who will be giving us the outer movements, the first and third movements of Ravel's Sonatina, and so uh, Sheng is starting to make his way to the stage. Go ahead, Sheng, don't be shy.
Shang. Good job. Um, this is a really difficult piece, right? Yeah. I know. I always find it almost like he was making fun of us because you uh -huh. know he titles it Sonatine, and you think mm -hmm. it's gonna be this nice simple piece, and it's nothing but. Um, so <laughs> yeah. it, yes, the Sonatine it probably refers more to this. It's compact structure more than the sheer virtuosity that Ravel demands, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to start off by saying that what I really liked about what you did, that is very often, um, I think, difficult when it comes to French music and impressionistic music is people tend to overpedal. And I really felt like you kept that clarity, which I think is really essential to Ravel. So I commend you for that because, mm -hmm. you know, with so much going on, it's hard to do that. Um, I wonder, though, if maybe we the easiest thing would be to just go through it and see if we can make certain passages, because I think sometimes you're really working very hard, um, maybe too mm -hmm. hard. I noticed oh. that in the third movement, for example, these ta da Da -da, those motives mm -hmm. sometimes there is no space in between but sometimes because of the nature of the writing because your hands are constantly bumping into one another um you that you kind of tend to move too much in mm. between those two notes and mm. i think they have to remain a unit um both musically and technically so maybe we can hone in on just some of these things that i think maybe you're just working too hard Mm -hmm. lifting your hand maybe a little too much because I think you will get more speed if you can use your hands just a little bit more efficiently okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um all right so let's see I do want to try you know because Ravel was so meticulous about all of his markings mm -hmm. right and um you know, all of these little accents he writes in places. And um, I always find it so funny in the last movement, da -da 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 -da, you, you mm -hmm. want to do a retard for sure because you think it sounds nice. And he's like, sans relente, <laughs> you know? So he, I think he's so specific. And in a way, he doesn't leave us that much room for our own, you know, for us, our self-indulgences. And I think um, his music speaks best when it's sort of, you know, done this way. You probably know the background to why he composed this, right? <laughs> you you know it was it was uh, for I, a competition. I, yeah, or just know it's for the competition. Yeah, it's yeah, the first and movement. exactly, yeah. exactly. And and um, I forgot what newspaper it was for, but yeah. it, it was so specific. It was like it has to be an F sharp, and it has to have seventy five measures, and uh, has to be sonata form. And of course, he didn't win, although he was the only participant in the competition, um, <laughs> because I think it was a little bit longer than seventy five measures. But anyways, um, let's. I always found that story to be kind of interesting. All right, so let's start and. Do you feel comfortable playing with that headset? I think Can it's you, okay. Yeah, it's you, okay. you want to try? If not, then we'll just kind of go in sections. But mm -hmm. let's begin that way. Uh, so you want to? Yeah, yeah. Try the opening, maybe up to um, the first movement of the third. Oh movement. yes, the first movement. I'm sorry. The first movement. Yeah. yeah, I think we have the same edition. Yeah, let's go all the way to it okay. until here. Okay. Try something. There is something you do with a. It's such a hard beginning. Here, you you prepare this, both you know with your shoulders and um, with time. And I'm wondering if can you sort of get out of it a little bit more matter of factly. You know what I mean? So I, I actually think it will help you feel more comfortable because I, I was watching what happens here. 
There's a lot of activity on these, the C sharp minor harmony. So I want you to just play that. Can you just play those three beats? Just, just. <laughs> That's right. Okay, now play for me once without any pedal. Without pedal, right? Without pedal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As much as you can to... What are you doing there? Are you playing... That's right. Okay. So you, you're holding your um, left hand pinky, C sharp, right? <laughs> no. <I didn't. laughs> no, you know, that will actually make it easier. That's going to be your point of balance. And then this can just sort of bounce off of it. I think it, because if I try to do then these become heavy yeah try to hold on to the c sharp i mean you should anyways but this will really help it'll be so much easier try does it feel easier yeah i think it's okay <laughs> it's okay for me okay okay you have uh, all right so so that you have absolutely no weight on your second finger in your left hand yeah yeah, you just you you just kind it's of finger too, yeah. yeah exactly okay try it both hands okay now add a little pedal so you feel like you have a little support don't add more <laughs> yeah yeah and then don't stop. Don't stop that much. Try to keep going, okay? That's right. I think so. I think so. Okay? Because we don't want the music to stop too much, right? And I. I uh, there has to be, I, I, I always find it interesting, this subito pianissimo yes. with an accent. Um, I, I think you, in order to deliver this subito pianissimo, which is so hard, you have to, I think the triplets are gonna, gonna be your solution to delivering this pianissimo. That has to be with very little pedal so that you're already clearing the air of all the s sound from before so you can start anew you know mm. so don't carry the pedal over too far you that should already be um with very little pedal if anything finger pedal i know this is hard to implement right away but try <laughs> <laughs> It is really hard, and you really know, I, I, it, it's not that you can't put pedal on the last G. Yeah, I have to. You can put a little hand. bit. I, yeah. I know, it's tricky, but I want you to think about it, okay? Because I think that's the only. It's very hard otherwise to make this feel like a subito pianissimo. Okay? And, and sweeter, this one. Okay, all right, now let's go from the subito, pianissimo. A stop and a subito? Yeah, 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 we'll, we'll skip the hard part, you'll figure that out. <laughs> okay. All right, Shang, you can't take that much time though. Do you want to take so much time? The here, I don't, I, don't, I don't have to take time. <laughs> you don't want to take time. No, because no, you know, I, I, I know, I know it's terribly difficult. But if you can try, <laughs> hang on a second. Is is it because your thumbs are interlocking there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I want you to just take a part, just that, and play just that. Yeah. 
Shang, I'm sorry. You know, I can't see your left hand, so if you can just play left hand for me, I mean, this is really... Uh, just that. Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I see. Hang on, let me try to... Okay, so the problem is... Um, your thumbs have to change places, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's where the oh, issue no, is. Usually, my, my right hand is on the top, so. You ah oh, okay. Yeah. Oh really? You play like this? Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. Is under the left hand. Okay, all right. Well, um, can you just try again? I, I'm just gonna give you this idea, you don't have to do it, mm -hmm. but uh, this C sharp here, your right hand is gonna play it. Oh, the C sharp, the left hand C sharp, the right yeah, hand. on that fourth. Yeah, I can do it. Yeah, okay, easier. good, good. But I want to hear your pinky and not this, not oh. that. Okay, try. I, I play a little slower. Okay, yeah. yeah That's works. right. If you works. if you yeah. work on your voicing there a little bit, I think it'll make you feel more comfortable. So that yeah. you don't have to take time because mm -hmm. taking time to accommodate th this, I think takes away from what we're supposed to hear, okay. you know? So I think in this instance, uh, you, we, you can rewrite it a little bit so that we don't get in the way of the music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. Um, maybe from here. <laughs> My, my, can you change pedal in both of these harmonies? I think you're using one pedal kind of, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Change. Yeah, yeah, I want you to really listen to very clearly. Okay, so if you're already putting that kind of sound, it's going to sound murky. So I guess what I'm trying to say is you're going to put the pedal right after the chord, not with it. Mm. Try it. <laughs> the first one was good. Something like that. Do you understand? Yeah, I understand it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I, I just think we need clarity, you know, because there's so much of this that's just I I, I don't know. It's so crystalline, you know. And um, would love to hear that. Okay, let's go from here. What bothers you about this place? Or maybe nothing? <laughs> <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. Okay, hang on. <laughs> I, I don't get enough of the... Uh. This rolled chord that goes from bottom up. <laughs> the whole thing. I, I think there has to be a little bit of a spark in this. <laughs> okay. Okay, so what's missing for me? I think your uh, right hand, right? Right hand yeah. thumb, and second finger get a little bit lazy. These two. 
Yes, try to activate those more. Try it. Better. Okay, that's I think more the quality of sound you want. Mm. Okay, and Ching, you have to be a lot uh, more careful about this one. You have to change pedal here too. I can't have this. <laughs> yeah? Just do the second. Yeah. better you understand mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah just listen a little more carefully to the harmony okay and same thing when you i i heard these two pedal together maybe not try picky of course but here how can we make sure this that we don't have a sort of a marked accent on do you know what I'm getting at you have now this one hear it as connected those two bars yeah try one more time keep going good Shang. how are you gonna make this très expressive I'm sorry? How are you going to make this très expressive? I will play extremely soft and then try to, you know, express it. I, <laughs> I mean, you're absolutely right. It's, it's yeah. so hard because you have to play extremely soft. You have to make yeah. sure that you're listening to these. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this... It's already so expressive and he writes that now this is even more. How do we make that happen when it's dynamically lower I mean what do we do mm -hmm. I mean I, I don't think there's one answer for it but uh -huh. I, I, I think I'm posing this question because mm -hmm. it feels almost like a, a coloristic and not really expressive and although it yeah. sounds beautiful that's not for what me, he like writes floating, floating on something like floating in the sky or something, you know, my feelings like that. Okay, okay. But pianistically, what can we do practically to convey whatever you want? So there are a couple of ways that I can see that I want mm -hmm. to just maybe throw at you and maybe you can go, you know, experiment. But mm -hmm sometimes just voicing differently right like this which he already gives you there is something about this descending seconds when you voice it all of a sudden in the in the left hand it it brings our ears there and it sounds expressive right or if you don't want to do that because you're concerned about keeping it really soft it's okay you can something about the lingering of the first note i mean like i said there are so many different ways these are the two ways i would try to explore personally because i don't i mean right now it just is missing the très expressive it's beautiful but you know i think there's a reason he writes that okay so just think about it um i think i think you did this both times in the recapitulation as well as here 
uh, here. Uh, where was it? Yeah. Did you wait a very, very long time here? Or where was it? No, it must have been here. Yes, you stopped. And yeah, it should not. I'm not sure that it should stop. Yeah, the sound, I think, somehow should continue. Okay? We don't have to go back, but just have the eye, because I know we have a lot to cover. Now, mm -hmm. um, Shane, when you played this through, these, it felt very grounded. Is that how you hear it? So, like it... Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, okay, that's fine then. Okay. Then let's try to make it work. Try right there. Okay, so I'll tell you why. I To me, it's not as convincing because the way you approach this is already quite grounded. So you have this and then another. So you could do like this one is the suspended, like a question. You could do that or make, make, make this lighter and then give me a little more of this. Do you know what I mean? But, uh, but I, I don't think, um, the syncopation of can have the same meaning as that. Okay. Can those converse a little more? Yeah. Okay, let's go to the second ending. Let's go to the second ending. The second ending, right? Yeah. yeah. I have to stop here, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. difficult Shane but there is something about first of all don't get so slow because when they we have to somehow not make it seem like it's a different piece or you know we went on to a different movement so I, I think the pulse even though there is something that's sus suspended about it I think the pulse has to be pretty strict this is another place where I would that one F sharp probably with the right hand do you understand mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah I, I are, you're playing with them are you going with the left hand no 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 right hand it's oh right. you are playing with it. can you play right on this Okay, so, yeah, okay, so you're not actually playing that F sharp with a right hand, and you don't have to, but just, I want you to, I want to show it to you so that if you, if you, this one. Mm. It's just an option because it's possible, but you just have to voice so carefully, and, it, and it's... It's really hard to control that thumb up here underneath your right hand. So just keep it in the back of your mind when you practice and you might want to try it out. Okay. okay? So, yeah. But I think we need to do this transition. So just do, see if you can get a smooth transition. It's okay, you can try again. <laughs> Good. All right. Okay. 
we don't have to do this now, but ideally, you can pedal through these so that they're legato. It's impossible to play it legato with a, without the help of the pedal there. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And what's different, obviously, I, I need all these fifths. It doesn't have to be super loud, but they have to resonate. Okay, so can you, I know you have a lot going on in the left, right hand. But that has to help you support the right hand. Okay, try. Good, all right. Shang, Shang, why are you changing pedal here? Then otherwise I can he writes it. I I need to hear all those. Oh, Open okay. fifths. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So I, I know we're gonna run out of time. So let's just <laughs> let's just go to the third movement briefly. Yeah. Um, so many detail. I just yeah. Made. There. Yeah. This is a really difficult piece. Um. And you know, I I know that you. I know this is really difficult. The tempo should be a little bit faster. A little bit faster. Yeah. Um. But if you feel uncomfortable in that tempo, um. It needs to sound more active. Sometimes it's not about, you know, you, you, I mean, that's fast, but that actually does not sound anime. It, it actually sounds a little bit formless, actually. So I think what we need, again, is clarity. So I'm not sure a lot of it has to do with pedal. I don't know if you're pedaling. Are you pedaling through both of those? Try. Yes, I the, the whole What thing. if you just you don't change the tempo but just change your pedal? So I have a different pedal on the second beat. Oh. Okay, let me try. That's right. Yeah. that already sounds more anime in character oh. okay and of course with you know the more you get used to this piece you'll be able to play faster but that's not really the point i think it's the and i would love to hear the act the first accent so i hear both bum 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 and then the for the accent disappears it gets moved Right? Da -da. Yeah, okay, try it again. Good, Shay. Um, this is gonna be my last piece of, of advice today. Mm -hmm. There is something um, very relaxed about the way you're approaching. <laughs> It's really beautiful, actually. <laughs> and, and I would totally do it if it wasn't this piece. But I think here, there is something premarqué. I think we need it. Da -da. It has to be a little sharper. So I think your arm doing maybe is not. Can you be a little bit more precise and um, direct? Direct in your approach. Okay, Shang. All right. Okay. The, now, one really one last thing. I promise. Mm -hmm. Can you play with your back straight once? I, I, this is just an experiment. But and try to play a notch faster. Would do more of that at least in your practice <laughs> you know because i don't think you're gaining anything by being here 
right? Mm -hmm. And I, I think it actually gets in the way sometimes of a direct connection to the instrument. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I know it's a lot of details that we no, worked that, that, on today, but you know, um, I think you're on the right track and it was really nice to hear you. Thank you. Professor. Yeah. <laughs>
nice to hear you. And it's so nice to hear this piece and, and, and be introduced to all of this repertoire. It's lovely. Um, I, I don't know, you know, if I, if somebody just played this for me and I didn't know it was in Sons, I would completely mistake it for Liszt. It, it, it's just striking to me how similar it is. Um, and of course they had a beautiful friendship. Um, I, I, I think in general, it's in a really wonderful place. I, but I would like to see maybe if you can make everything just a little bit bolder. I think everything's right, right there, but maybe the colors can be just a little bit bolder and your voicing can be you just basically do more of everything you're doing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's go, let, let's just work through it from the beginning. I think we can get through this. Okay. And you can play with your headset, right? Your, yeah, oh, you, you have the, you, like, you yes. You want me to start from the beginning? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Now, if I can stop you here, look, the first thing, comment I have is that when, when you have the, you carry the pedal to the next section. I'm not sure you, uh, you should do that. I, I think there is some, this, and then maybe as much as you can keep listening to the, this, uh, even with the tremolo. And I think the, the trick is that the left hand doesn't participate in the crescendo of the tremolo. That it's really, it's just a color and those two Ds, it should be like, you know, just alone, completely isolated okay. from the rest of it. Yeah, can you try? idea though so that it just cuts through okay all right Tr try the second one i'm sorry so i re release the pedal basically right before the g's right absolutely yeah and you know you did i heard a little bit of e in that d too i think it needs to you know because there's something so striking about unisons in general in music Right when something is, and it draws us immediately. There's such an intensity in a unison. So I would love not to mar it, mar it with any other sound, and then a little bit of harmony. Go back, body. Yeah. Okay. Try. better I think that was a lot better now I have a question look it's a surprise we've been do, going back to this right and then ah, we're going somewhere else and I think it's more special than you make it and then the echo yeah can you can you pay a little bit more attention to the fact that it's rising? Okay? Just maybe the second one of these.
keep going. Good, keep going. Okay, good. Sabina, um, this, I, I looked at this earlier and I thought, you're not even warmed up. And then he's asking you, not very nice. Okay, I, I, it's so tricky and you're doing a really good job getting around that. All right, now, when you start, I wonder, how much pedal are you using here? Not a lot. Not a lot, good, but are you using some? I see. Can I? Um, I wonder if you can just open the soundboard by putting your foot on the pedal, like just rest it, but don't press it, because I think you can still get better than. I mean, there's something very dry about this, which is exciting too, but there's something more foreboding than exciting it, it, f at least for me and i wonder if you just keep your pedal there without really pressing it you're gonna get just enough ambient pedaling um I, I, try it I'm, I'm just curious and i might not be able to catch it through zoom but you will Okay, so don't don't press it. Just just keep just it there. Like keep it floating. Yeah, just keep it there. Yeah. Now more pedal. Okay. Yeah, Sabina. I don't know what you heard over there, but I find that there is a difference between not keeping your pedal in touch with your foot and having it connected somehow it creates a, just enough resonance yeah i don't know if you heard that over there and then of course i think i would use more and i think here you can take a little more time it's so hard anyway and, and you can dramatize it a little bit more so it doesn't feel like it's just like a technical thing you have to hurdle, you have to get through. Yeah, really arrive there and use... I think your left hand has to compete with the right hand. Answer it. Okay? All right. Um, do it one more time and then keep going. From the Allegro Yeah, yeah. Try the pedals. Yeah. your pedaling a lot there i thought it added uh, it, it it just helped you re reach this and i like the time you took there too at the arrival okay I, I um the only thing i would add is when you get out of it maybe you can pay attention to those slurs in the left hand all right here where you just stop these <laughs> these chords <laughs> I think because it's going nowhere, you have to make something of it with the sound that you're creating. So I think the sound has to be a lot more open. It's a little bit tight, I think. Don't treat it like... I don't think it's that. It's... Maybe a little more... More arm, more release slightly more pedal just think of it, it like here you're gonna enjoy not the rhythmic energy but the sonority a little right. bit more okay and then we'll go back to the rhythmic energy right away all right can you start right there mm -hmm. all right how much more can you ah don't change
piece of pedal. One pedal per measure. Try it. Okay. Okay. That's right. I think we need that much sound. Okay? And and really don't be apologetic when you get a throw it, go until the end, and you can make a dramatic pause, I think. Probably that's probably what list would have done, although I know this is not list once again. Okay. All right, can you try that again? You're doing a great job. I just want you to hold your left hand in the E dot. You kind of let go. You, you, yeah? Hang on to that note. I know you have a lot going on in the right hand, but I wish your attention was a little bit more with your left hand. Try it. Can you try right on it? That's it. It's okay, it's okay, but that was much better. Keep going. All right, Sabina, here, I know you need a lot of sound, and I think most of that is gonna have to be helped by your left hand and your pedal. Are you changing pedal on every single one of these? No. No, where are you changing? Hmm. I've never paid attention. <laughs> well, okay, let me tell you one thing first. While you pay attention to the pedal, can you actually um, listen to both hands equally? Meaning it it's accompanimental in a way, but it needs to support. Otherwise, it's in a register where it can't sustain this intensity by itself okay. yeah okay all right so get get into it and then give more to your left hand and check check your pedal good okay that's better the only thing i would change now is when you get to the air can that be a little more decisive yeah, there. Yeah, you understand? Yeah. Yeah, try. Yeah, that was better. That was better. Keep going. some of it but I actually don't hear everything I actually don't hear all the way to the end can you hear it because if you do I will yeah try try it and if there is something what is I think basically it's that this note because you want to play it softer it gets lost so make sure that your arm is supporting that note too yeah, try it. Right on it. Good. Good. Okay, Sabina. Did you feel different when you did this time because it really sang yeah i just paid attention to the, the top line i think more more okay okay so it's just kind of heightening our senses now can you do the same thing with those 16th notes mm -hmm. yeah because yeah. Th this comes out 
I end up hearing this in bum bum bum. So activate your thumb and two if that's what you're using. I think that's what you're using. Mm -hmm. I think. Okay. All right. Just pay attention to it. I think that's all you need. Try it. this most of it very much I think when you want more sound like in the rinforzando when you have this you want to do it not just with your right hand but your left hand it's a you're working extremely hard with your right hand buddy do it with the left hand too okay can you start right on the rinforzando Sabina, so if you were to orchestrate this, who would you give it to? Give what to the... To the dude. Hmm. Not including voice? No, no. I, I'm just wondering what sound you have in mind because there's something, at least to me, that feels very a muted brass bom, 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 bom. Yeah, I and and i wonder you know because when when we you're voicing the top and of course that's you know what we should do most of the time in a way but there is something even more tragic about no voicing at all in, in a place like this, you know, where it's just, you know, that it, there's something about everything having this equality of sound. And I think that will help what you're doing here even more. You're, you're creating a very um, tragic atmosphere, but I think that will help you even more. And when you have things like this, making sure that you don't carry any pedal over because that becomes a little almost too hopeful. You know, everything just sort of clean. Yeah? Okay. okay? All right, let's hear this famous meditation. <laughs>
beautiful. Okay, I hate to stop you because it's it's I that's gorgeous music. Um, but I do want to ask you th these triplets that you know come in. I, you tend to sort of move forward through them. Every single one of them. Is that something that you're doing intentionally? Okay, so just keep that in mind. I don't want you to do anything drastic to change it, but I think just by being aware, um, you'll probably treat them a little bit differently. I, you know, at the at tempo when it's, we're in the higher register, I thought it sang beautifully. Um, at the beginning though, you know, of course, yeah, that's fine. And I wonder if you can keep it that way. And and, and maybe the, the first triplet really shouldn't be pushed. I mean, we finally landed from the muted basses before. Something so comforting and not moving necessarily not in a hurry maybe and then you have a little more direction you start to have more and more focus you know and direction maybe you can think of it that way because it's so beautifully written that it doesn't i mean i think you can make it work mm -hmm. in any way honestly um but i personally i always still like to have where i'm going sort of mapped out and then you can do what you want spontaneously okay all right we don't have to do that again but let's just go from left hand is is getting in the way a little bit um particularly in the poco animato it, it maybe you're pedaling too because it, you're changing yeah you're changing there right so can you keep your left hand a little bit less um maybe just a little less audible a little less clear So that somehow we can hear this as a longer line, yeah? And also this, this. You're marking both of the downbeats in similar ways. And I think it takes away from keeping those two measures together. That's one. This is another. And now you have um, and then we have both of those downbeats. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. No, yeah? Okay, all right. Why don't we just actually, for the sake of time, let's just start at the poco animato though. good here can you play imagine fortissimo it's not gonna sound that way but i think that's i think we need to hear it okay try just playing fortissimo there just your thumbs or your second finger and thumbs don't do 
Don't change the pedal so much. You 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 need more help. Twice a twice a measure. Okay. Okay. even more the top and you know in a place are you doing are you are you lifting your hand uh, sorry i wasn't looking but not very much nothing good do me a favor um there's just a little trick but actually connect these as you would legato almost but lift the other one because then the voicing will be so much more clear. Can you just try it right on the uh, tempo? Yeah. yeah. It just feels really weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. I feel like I would need to practice that. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, okay. That's fine, but exaggerate your voicing for now. Okay. Yeah. Okay? That's better. Here too. That's it. Yeah, that, that's already better. Okay, so do I hate to. I'm sorry, I hate to cut in here, but we have to just a kind of a two minute warning because we do have to actually stop kind of precisely at four. Okay, okay. Well, you know, I don't have that much more to say though. So, oh yeah. At the very end, um, after we're done with all of, uh, all of this stuff, uh, where it's not only here, it, it almost reminds me of, you know, at the end of the Rachmaninoff Paganini Rhapsody, um, after, you know, the whole orchestra, when the piano has one whole measure of just winding down, it needs to keep that intensity still you know at the beginning of the winding down process and that's kind of how i felt here yes we're getting calmer and everything you thought but you're still exalted from everything that happened and then maybe only with those chords you can really internally put it to rest do you know what i mean yeah yeah okay good but it was beautiful thank you Thank you so much, uh, Sabina and Brava, and Bravi to all three performers, marvelous performances, and um, Professor Lee, just such wonderful, insightful, illuminating uh, comments, and uh, indefatigable, and just going, um, going to every dimension of these pieces. Um, that was just so fantastic, and such a, such a great pleasure. So um, thank you so much for, for joining us today. I'm so sorry we have to rush off but we have another event at 4 10. <laughs> so um you know how it goes one zoom event goes. at a time <laughs> yes so uh that's why we're dashing off here but thank you so so much uh, you and i will be in touch soon yes we'll be in touch and thank you to everyone who played you have marvelous students and it was oh, really a pleasure it's it's a it's a real blessing to be able to work with with all of them <laughs>